Good evening, scholars and friends. It's time for tonight's bedtime story. Tonight, I will be reading Jacob's Ladder, authored by Jake Evanoff and illustrated by Nino Belita. This is Jacob. He's 10 years old and has a heart as big as can be. Over here is Hallie. She's also 10 years old and she's as sweet as pie. They live in a small town called Hatterville where everybody knows each other by name. Jacob and Hallie are the best of friends and they do absolutely everything together. from flying their drones, to telling spooky stories at sleepovers, and even sharing all of their secrets. Hallie and Jacob have been next door neighbors for as long as they can remember. Every day after school, they meet up in Jacob's treehouse at precisely 3.23 p.m. One day, Jacob showed up at 3.23 as usual, but Hallie was nowhere in sight. So he waited and waited and waited some more, but she never showed up. Later that night, Jacob was so disappointed that he hardly touched his spaghetti and meatballs. Hallie had never missed a treehouse meetup before. This was when his parents decided to tell him that Hallie had to move far, far away. Before bedtime, Jacob's dad brought him a great big pair of binoculars. He then reminded Jacob about the story of Hallie's comet, which told that even though she's gone right now, she'll still come back to visit. Jacob decided he had to see for himself, so he went to his window and looked through his binoculars. Jacob looked for hours before he finally spotted it. It was Hallie's comet zooming right past his eyes. He simply couldn't believe it. Every single night that week, Jacob waited until the sun went down to pull out his binoculars and look for the comet. He had no luck in his search, so he came up with a plan. The next morning was a Saturday. This usually meant Jacob would be sitting eagerly at the breakfast table to enjoy mom's famous pancakes and bacon but he was nowhere to be found. Jacob's dad went out to the backyard to search for him and there he was working away at something. It was a ladder. Jacob had decided that he couldn't wait to see Hallie again, so he was going to have to go up and find her. Jacob's dad began to help him build his ladder, and it wasn't long before they ran out of supplies. So they drove down to the hardware store. As the ladder got taller and taller, the two were visiting the store more and more often, sometimes twice in one day. Finally, the shop owner asked what they could possibly need all of the wood for. When Jacob showed the shop owner his blueprints for the ladder, he was so eager to help out that he gave them their supplies for free that day. Pretty soon, Jacob's ladder was the talk of the town. From the construction workers to the engineers, even regular families like Jacob's, 
everyone who heard about it wanted to help out. Even the local news reporter showed up to help spread the word. And just like that, the entire town was there in support. The lumberjacks got to chopping away, the scientists plugged in their calculations, and the iron workers made nails. The time had finally arrived. Jacob's ladder was complete. It just needed to be put into place. The town's football team gathered and hoisted the ladder with all of their might. Up it went. The town cheered for Jacob as he began to climb his ladder. Jacob climbed and climbed and he climbed some more. Eventually, he was higher than the clouds. Not long after, Jacob had reached the stars. He pulled out his binoculars and began looking around. That was when he spotted it, Halley's Comet, but it was headed right towards him and fast. Jacob slid down the ladder as quick as he could, flying past the stars, zooming through the clouds and landing safely on the ground right before the comet crashed into the ladder. created a great explosion in the sky and shattered the comet and the ladder into millions of pieces. Small glowing bits of meteor floated down, coating the entire town in sparkling dust. In the end, Jacob wasn't sad that his friend was gone. In fact, he was happy because he knew that she would always live on in the big hearts of the small town called Hatterfield. The End. Good night.